Hello, I am Poppy Cooks and welcome to my YouTube channel where I am the potato queen of the internet and I'm going to be showing you how to make delicious potato recipes and we've got a right good one for you today. I've had my ginger shot, I've had my coffee, so we're making a Dauphin Waz potato. Dauphin Waz potato is another classic French delicacy, or a French dish really, which is basically layers of delicious potato with cream and milk. I like to take it a little bit a step further, ditch the milk off, because why would you want thin cream, and just use cream. So it's very decadent, it's very rich, but it is full of flavour, and it is the perfect centrepiece to any dinner that you're having, or even lunch, or whatever you fancy. It's really good on a Sunday roast. Oh, it's really good on a Sunday roast, because you get that creaminess, and it's just delicious with a bit of gravy. Anyway, I can't imagine that's how the French were going to serve it, but that's exactly how I like it. So, we have got around two kilos of potatoes. Um, again, you can use kind of a starchy potato. It's a King Edward in the UK, or it's a uh, Maris Piper. In the US, you'd be going for something that's a bit like a russet in Idaho, anything that's a bit starchy, because we don't want them to be too waxy, because they're going to be baked, and if they're waxy, that they, you still feel the chew on them. We do kind of want everything to be nice and soft as you bite into it with just a nice little crusty top. Who doesn't love a crusty top? That sounds like a really rubbish drink at a pub. Um, so, I've got some potatoes already peeled, but I'm going to show you how to peel a potato. It's very, very exciting. Start from the top and work your way down. As simple as that. Now you'll see that the colour of these potatoes are a little bit different to the ones that I've already done. But this is kind of showing you the difference in potato. This is actually a waxier potato, but I wanted to show you the difference. And you'll see that kind of the yellowness, you can kind of see sometimes you'll get a Maris Piper potato and you'll peel it and it's kind of yellow. It can mean that it's a little bit older actually, which is mad, and the sugars have developed a little bit inside the potato in the starch and it can give you a bit of a different texture. This year, 2024, has been a really bad harvest for potatoes, and I've been trying my best to be like, these Maris Pipers are gonna work, but sometimes they haven't, even for like chips and roast potatoes, they go a little bit tacky. It's wild. The farming world is wild and produce, and the fact that you can have like a bad crop of potatoes. My whole career's on the line. For your dauphin was, you kind of want, um, what would it be? Maybe a pound coin thickness, something like that. Obviously, if you're not in the UK, pound coin means nothing to you, but maybe it's less than that, actually. What would that be? Come on, measurements. Think of, think of things in your mind. Maybe two millimetres, three millimetres, something like that. My finger is two centimetres thick. I know that, because I measured it. So it's like a, a quarter. So what's that? What's that? What's a quarter of two? 2.5 mil? No? No. I got no's across the board then. It's some, basically, we'll get a zoom in on this. It's that thick. I've done all my chopping. I've got all my lovely um, slices of potato, which is really satisfying actually. I don't know why. They look lovely. They look like little counters, you know, when you go, I was going to say poker, but not poker, but like, you know, when you go to like the slot machines, as in like, as in like a, a seaside town, not like a casino. I'm not a gambler, but just like the 20p machines anyway. Talking absolute nonsense. So they are all chopped. I am now going to get my creme nice and warm. So pan, double cream. I always measure with my heart with cream, but it is around 600 mils. So the whole tub, that is 600 mils, isn't it? it usually is, yeah it is. Delicious. Um, don't know why I should put that in the bin. I've got a bin right here. Anyway, that goes into the bin. So I've got some garlic cloves. You won't be able to see here. I'm gonna let me move this. That you can keep the skin on and just smash slightly. I mean slightly. I just absolutely destroyed that one. A bit stronger than I thought I was. Because um, we're just gonna infuse the cream with some garlic um, and then we'll take them out before we add anything else into our cream. So that's gonna go on a medium heat until it thickens and you, you'll see the color change. So at the minute it's very bright white, but a little bit creamy, but it's gonna go like 
Magnolia. What's that colour that was everywhere in the 90s on the walls or the early noise? It's Magnolia, isn't it? Every mom, Magnolia the shit out of it. That's what we're doing with the cream. You could put this on the walls and call yourself Leslie Ash. Lawrence Luenin Bowen <laughs> is going on the stove. What garbage am I talking about? Oh, we also need plenty of salt and pepper in there as well. Oh, the fan's on me. Oh, no, white pepper. Now, we're going to put white pepper in here so that we don't get flecks of black pepper, so it looks very um, pure, you know, just looks as it is. So a pinch of white pepper is really good for that. It's lovely kind of flavour. I sometimes think, I think white pepper is spicier than black pepper, which I really kind of enjoy. It has that real warmth to it, so it's a really lovely ingredient, so... If you're bored of constantly cracking black pepper into everything, put a bit of white pepper in instead. And a touch of nutmeg, like a small pinch. A small pinch goes a long way. If you've got a little bit of fresh, you could grate that in as well. But nutmeg and cream, just a match made in heaven. So we're going to leave that just to thicken up a little bit. So the cream has boiled slightly and it's thickened up and it's become just a little bit more creamy. Don't know how else to describe it. Um, so I'm going to take the garlic out. I should get some little pincers for that. I got these in a set of knives and I've always thought they seem a little bit extravagant, but they're really good for getting garlic out of pots. So you can really smell the garlic in there as well, which is lovely. So that's infused. It's had about, to like bring it to the boil and you know, make it creamy and thick, it was probably around four to five minutes and then I've left it to infuse for a little bit. So that's another four minutes or so. So the garlic's really in there. There's something about garlicky cream which is just unbelievable. So this is still hot. Add the potato slices into your cream. That's why I've got quite a large um, saucepan for this because of how many potatoes are going into it as well. Give them all a lovely mix. And then, depending on how, um, how you know, tough your fingers are, you can leave it to cool ever so slightly so that you can handle it. Or if you've got those cooks asbestos fingers, get right in there, sweetheart, if you feel like it. But yeah, leave it to cool, and then we're gonna place our potatoes into our baking tray. Two different ways that you can layer up your dough from was. Now, there's an easy way where you just basically tip that whole pan in, um, just making sure that everything's kind of flat and there's not too many kind of standing up, crisscross potatoes. Um, super simple, lovely and easy. Or you can layer it one by one, which is what I'm going to do, hence why I've left it to cool so I can get my hands in there. It doesn't have to be as perfect as a potato parve or the 15 hour potato or like a pomana, um, but it's nice to have those layers so that when you cut it, you can see those individual layers of potato throughout the dauphinoise. A little bit like, you know, when you're doing like a cake or when you're not on Bake Off and they're like the layers, that's what we're looking for. So, yeah, just go for it one by one, just overlapping slightly. I used to have to make so much dauphinoise at work. It was unbelievable. I literally did gastros. So a gastro is, I've got a gastro actually, I'll show you. A gastro is literally about this big. And it was just dauphinoise. And the chef liked it layer by layer. Which is good, good practice for becoming the potato queen. I was always on potatoes. It was just meant to be, wasn't it? It's always meant to make potatoes. Layer these up. Again, like I said, it doesn't have to be like, you know, you're doing it at home. It doesn't have to be completely like a work of art, but it does look nice when you cut into it and get those individual layers of potato. Also, I've forgotten to do it on the first layer. 
I was talking rubbish, wasn't I? So in between the layers, a little bit of salt and pepper as well because we've only got the kind of seasoning coming from the cream, so it needs a little bit more in between. I've also really done this not neatly at all. Oh, you can also use flaky salt or, you know, whatever you've got in your grinder. And white pepper, that was it. I always instinctively just reach for the black pepper, but a sprinkle of white pepper in there to add that little bit of peppery spice. And then carry on. It's quite good if you've got someone else in the kitchen who you can be like, right, season, so you can keep your hands all mucky. And if you want to use gloves, use gloves. So I just can't. Something about the feel of gloves and food really puts me off. Unless I've, you know, get it with a bit more like raw meat and stuff. But with potatoes and cream, you're all right. Just wash your hands. Don't scratch your ass before you start doing it. Also, don't be scared to season it. Um, because, like I said, all we've got is cream and potatoes here. So both... Both of these ingredients absorb flavour and then you will have a little bit of cream left. Pour it in. And then just weigh it down, push it down slightly so that all that cream can get into all the crevices. It's nice and messy this is, I like that tiny bit more. It doesn't need too much cream. It doesn't need to be completely floating in cream, but you want it to just, not necessarily be covered because we kind of want to see the top layer, but there's, there's enough so that it can actually cook in the cream. Right, I'll wash my hands, tidy up, and then crack on. Mm. That's bloody delicious. Because the cream is actually going to cook quicker than the potatoes and it will colour on top, we're going to put a little bit of greaseproof paper on there and press it actually onto the dough from was. It's not going to kind of remove any of the colour because it's not going to get any colour until we take that greaseproof paper off, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't, but you'll see what I mean. And then that goes into the oven at 160 degrees Celsius, which is something in Fahrenheit... If someone could do some magical editing and put Fahrenheit somewhere, perfect. I can't remember off the top of my head. So, au revoir to les dauphinois. So I've just removed that bit of parchment paper off of the Dauphinois potatoes and they stay in the oven now for about 20 to 30 minutes. Here we have our ready done Dauphinois. So this has had 40 minutes in the oven at 160 with that paper on and then we've removed the paper and left it in the oven for around 20 to 30 minutes and you can kind of tell 20 minutes is good it will have a lovely bit of color but we've done 30 to get that real golden shine on there because it's gorgeous and you want to keep it at that low temperature to make sure that that cream doesn't split that's why it's at 160 degrees celsius so here we are this beauty look at it it's absolutely phenomenal now i don't know about you but i will fight anybody who tries to take a corner piece off of me whether that's a lasagna a potato bake what else do you put? A macaroni cheese. I want that corner, crispy, delicious bit. That's my favourite bit. So that's what we're going to serve up. So just get around the edge. Oh, what kind of portion size do we do? A healthy portion size, isn't it? Get in there. It's so soft in the middle. But then you've got this, like, golden... It's not crunchy, but, like... Oh, it's a bit crunchy, bit tacky, bit crunchy, golden, creamy potato. Also, if in doubt, when you're making your dauphinoise and you're not sure if it's cooked or anything yet, just uh, stick a knife in, and if it feels soft and it goes through, then you're all good. But if it feels like raw potato, cook it for a little bit longer, and you can leave the grease proof on if you want to, if it's colouring too quickly. I never know how to tackle it now. Do I go that way, that way? I think we're going to go this way. 
I've done a bigger portion than my spatula can get. Let me get another apparatus. It needs, can you just fit under there? Yes. Little goes under, goes under, a goes under. There you go. There's some chef lingo. If someone ever shouts that at you, it just means one of these. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Double fisted dauphinoise. Delicious. As you can see, because this is a longer tray, it means that you get a little bit of a thinner layering, but still a beautiful, beautiful outcome. So if you want it thicker, go for a, uh, a chunkier baking tray, like the layers and just the creaminess. And you can see that the potatoes absorb that cream, you know, it isn't oozing out lots of cream. It's actually been absorbed into the potato, so it's like soft and buttery and creamy and rich and decadent and all the good things that you want from any dish, really. It sounds more like a dessert, but it's beautiful. Maybe you could make a dessert, maybe you could put some sugar in it and do it. No, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. And you get these lovely crispy bits on top. Oh my God, that's delicious. Now, after all that lovely hard work, I guess, eat my dough for was. Oh, it's so good. Okay, oh, the crispy bit, hang on. We need to get a little bit at the top and then that soft, pillowy, creamy center. Mm. Oh, sorry. Luxurious, delicious, full of flavour. And it's so simple. So, so simple. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That's, that's the money shot right there. Money shot? What's it called? I don't know. That's, that's the million dollar potato there. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Perfect. If you want more delicious potato recipes, then like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's very strange saying that, I feel proper fancy. Um, and you too can have delicious dope and potatoes.